Hello, I'm Anthony Hughes, and in this video I'll be introducing you to the new revolutionary cues in Dorico 1.2, the advanced music notation software from Steinberg. Cues can be used to show the music another instrument is playing, and so help orientate a player before an entry or solo, perhaps after a long passage of rests. They can also help with coordination or tuning, or suggest a phrase that could be played when the originally intended instrument is not available. Creating a cue is as simple as selecting where you would like the cue to appear, opening the new Cues panel and clicking the Insert Cue button, or by using the key command Shift U. Start typing the name of the instrument you would like cued and select it from the list. The cue is created with Dorico automatically formatting it correctly, using smaller sized notes and adding an appropriate label. If you know how long you want the cue to last, you can make the relevant selection to start with. However, once the cue has been created, it is easy to move the start and end positions to reveal the exact portion of music you need. And of course, this works with the standard Dorico shortcuts of Alt and the arrow keys to move the entire cue and shift alt arrow keys to lengthen and shorten the cue. Cues in Dorico are dynamic, meaning they are linked to the original source material and update in real time if that source music changes. Now, by default, cues are set to show in instrumental parts and not in the full score, as is the custom in much printed music. However, to make it easier to create and edit cues, they are always visible in galley view even in the full score. You can control which layouts show cues via the Players category in Layout Options. You might find it useful to switch them on for the full score while you are finding suitable cues to use in a project. And when cues are not configured to show, they will be indicated by signposts, displaying the name of the cued instrument. It's even possible to create cues directly in instrumental parts with multibar rests. Here I'm starting note input, then holding down control, and that's command on Mac, and pressing the left arrow key to step back a whole bar, then creating the cue as per normal. You can see where you're using cues in your music by turning on highlight cues in the view menu. Cues will be colored yellow, while the source music will be colored blue, and the highlights become more opaque as you zoom out, making it easy to get an overview of the cues used across a score. In the Cues panel, you will find the Suggest Cues section. Dorico will scan your music to find suitable locations to add cues. Set the amount of time players can rest for before you would like to see a cue. You can choose to ignore rehearsal marks and existing cues, then click Update to generate a list of cue suggestions for the current flow and layout. Click on a suggestion in the list to be taken to that point in the score where you can easily create a relevant cue. Below the suggestions table is a list of the instruments that are sounding at that point in the music. You can choose to ignore cue suggestions as you work through the list. If you switch to another flow or layout, click the update button again to refresh the list for the current view. By default, cue suggestions will be highlighted by a red background providing you with an easy way to see the places a cue could be advisable to add. You can turn off these highlights by unchecking the Highlight Suggestions checkbox. As you would expect, Dorico allows you to manage many aspects of the layout and appearance of cues via the engraving options, which affect the whole project, and the Cues group of the Properties panel for control over individual cues. These include the positioning and content of cue labels, and there are comprehensive options for limiting which notations in the source music are included, allowing you to choose whether slurs and articulations, dynamics, ornaments, and playing techniques, and even lyrics and other text should be displayed as part of the cue. Dorico makes sensible decisions about what clef to use for the cue though this is configurable, as is making octave adjustments for transposing instruments. When a cue starts or ends in the middle of a bar, 
it will be padded with rests up to the preceding and following bar boundaries, so that it is clear to the player how the rhythm of the cue fits with the existing material. And if you prefer not to see them, they can be hidden with the hide rests around cue property. And by default, full-sized bar rests will appear throughout the cue to indicate to the player that they should not play. In some jazz scores, or if the cue is to be used as a potential doubling, you may like to hide these bar rests. And this is done on the Rests page of Notation Options, setting bar rests in cues to omit bar rests. When cues are drawn with these bar rests visible, all of the notes in the cue take the same stem direction as if they occupy their own voice. Dorico intelligently determines the direction of the stems, though you can override this with the voice direction property. And when the cue contains more than one voice, the original stem directions of the source music are preserved. If the start or end of a cue falls in the middle of a sustained note, Dorico will draw the appropriate ties joining to the first or last note as necessary. Sometimes you may need to provide only the rhythm of some music as a cue. Perhaps several instruments are playing the same distinctive rhythm that you want to include for another player. Switch on the rhythmic cue property and the material will appear above the staff. Then use the distance property to set how far away from the top line of the staff the music is drawn. Unpitched percussion instruments are by default cued as rhythmic cues. If you switch off the rhythmic cue property for an unpitched percussion instrument, it will draw on the center line of the staff, and the unpitched notes position property then allows you to choose on which staff position the cued notes are placed. The size of cued notes, in other words the scale factor relative to full-sized notes, can be set in the cues page of engraving options. And the note spacing page of layout options, allows you to set the spacing scale factor, again relative to normal notes, as note spacing for cues is typically a little tighter. And of course, in engrave mode, it is possible to make graphical adjustments to the cued music without affecting the formatting of the source music. This includes being able to select a note and using Alt and the minus and equals keys to change the enharmonic spelling of notes without modifying the source. If you've found this video helpful, please click the thumbs up button below to let me know you've liked it. And subscribe to our Dorico channel today to see many more videos like this one. I'm Anthony Hughes. Thanks for watching.